So this section is on stretching, and we're going to look at two kinds of stretching. Stretching vertically, like you're stretching that function out or squishing it down, and then horizontally, where you're pulling it out or pressing it in. So take a look at some stretching. So we're going to work with our friend here, the y equals x squared function. But first off, and this one's a little peculiar, or vertical. Now, I'm saying this is stretching. It's really, let's see the other term maybe used, shrinking. I'm going to cover both of these. Let's talk about vertical. So vertical stretching means you're doing this. Vertical shrinking means you're doing this, like you're squishing it. So what happens? We have to be a little careful with our C. For a stretch, we take f of x and multiply by C for C greater than 1. Now, c equals 1, we're just multiplying f of x by 1, that doesn't change anything. Now, to shrink it, you still multiply f of x by c, but you choose c be a fraction between 0 and 1. Now, if c is 0, it just turns everything to zero. This becomes zero. Y equals zero. F of x equals zero. Well, I mean, y equals zero. Horizontal line along the x-axis. If c is one, again, you're multiplying by one. It's just the original f of x. If you're less than zero, you're actually doing two transformations. You're going to be either shrinking or stretching, and then that negative sign is going to do a reflection across the y-axis. I'm oh, sorry, the x-axis, the x-axis. So if you have c less than zero, again, you might be doing these, but then you've got that reflection over the x-axis. Drive that point home. So let's look at some examples. And again, we'll go with f of x is x squared. So what happens here again, we're just going to square this so for one, zero, one, two. But let's have C equal to, so we're going to stretch this. So C, or 2, times F of X. So again, we're only modifying F of X, we're leaving X alone. So multiply F of X by 2, we'll get 8 times 2 is 2, times 2 is 0 times 2 is a 2, and oh, sorry, I made a mistake, that's 4, times 2 is 8. So the original ordered pairs, negative 2 and 4, negative 1 and 1, 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 2 and 4. The new ordered pairs, negative 2, Eight, negative one, two, zero, zero, one, two, two, and eight. So now we're going to graph these ordered pairs and these new ordered pairs. 
single gap. So again, this is the vertical stretch. So for the original function in negative 2 and 4, negative 1 and 1, 0 and 0, 1 and 1, 2 and 4. And there we go. For the new function, we take the f of x value of each of these points and multiply by 2. So this becomes 8, this becomes C2, well this stays 0, this one became 2, this one became 8. Zero. 0 there, it stays. Yeah. More artistic license there. A little bit too much license. There we go. So basically what's happened is we've taken this function here and we stretched it up. This point went up. That one went up. Okay, this one stayed. But you know, the roots stay where they are, so to speak. That one went up. And then this one went up. And so we just stretch this parabola up. Oh, there you go, that's a stretching. Let's look at a shrinking. So in this case, we're going to let C equal a half. There we go. Again, same x inputs. And again, we're still using f of x as x squared. We square all these inputs. Now we're going to multiply these outputs. Every inputs, we have our outputs now. Multiply them by half. So a half times four is two. Half times one is a half. Half times zero is zero. A half times one is a half. And a half times four is two. So we have our original ordered pairs. We now have new ones. Negative two and two. Negative one and a half. We still have zero, zero. That one's still there. One and a half. And two and two. So original ordered pairs, new ordered pairs. So let's graph these and see what this looks like.
put in a half there. Now, the original ordered pairs, negative two and four, negative one and one, zero and zero, one and one, two and four. The new ordered pairs, well, negative two, two, negative one and a half, Zero and zero is still there. One and a half, two and two. So what's happened is we've taken this parabola and we've kind of squished it down to this. So this point shrunk down to here, this point shrunk down to here. Okay, that would stay the same. But this one shrunk down to here, this one shrunk down to there. So that's a vertical shrink. Again, we're just modifying the f of x coordinate or modifying the y coordinate. Now we're still going to do shrinking and stretching, except this time we're going to do it horizontally. So what we do here is we take f of x, and instead of multiplying the entire function f of x by c, we're going to multiply x itself by c. And so what's going to happen? Again, this is where that kind of counterintuitive result comes in, at least aesthetically speaking. For vertical stretching, it made sense if you multiply by a whole number, you stretch. If you multiply by a fraction, you shrink. In this case, to stretch, C is between 0 and 1. And the shrink. C is going to be greater than 1. So what was doing the shrinking for vertical does the stretching for horizontal. What was doing the uh, stretching for vertical is doing the shrinking for horizontal. So, all right, let's take a look. Again, we'll go with f of x is x squared, and let's stretch it. So let's go with c equals a half. Well, in this case, what's going to happen? Let's use our regular points here. Let's take a look. Well, again, we're squaring each of these. Four, four, zero, one, and two. But now we're going to take the x and multiply it by a half. So f, one half times negative two. Let's f of negative one. So we're just squaring negative one, and that's one. But for this one, f of a half times negative one. Let's f of negative a half or one fourth. For zero, 
f of one half times zero. Not just f of zero. Square of zero, you get zero. So now f of one is one, f of two is four. Now f of one half times one, that's just f of one half. And again, that's one fourth. It's all right. And then you put an x is two, and f of one half times two, which is f of one, one squared is just one. So we've got our original ordered pairs, and then we've got these new ones. Negative two and one, negative one and one, zero and zero, one and one fourth. Oh, and I'm sorry, sorry, this is not one and one, that's one and one fourth. This is two and one. Original ordered pairs, new ordered pairs. Let's see what these look like when we graph them. Let's do that half, that's a quarter, and that's a third, or three quarters. So we graph the original points at negative two and four, negative one and one, one and one, two and four. Oh, I don't want to forget zero and zero. So here's our original parabola. And just as an interesting point, let's take a look at f of negative a half. Just f without the modification. So we're just going to square negative half, you get one fourth. And if you look at f of a half, square a half, you also get a fourth. So we'll have these ordered pairs. Here's negative a half, here's a half, and a fourth. Have those points. All right. So we've added those extra points in there, and they're, they're going to kind of illustrate something here we're trying to see. The modifications. So when x was negative 2, we had to multiply negative 2 by a half to get negative 1. You square that, you got positive 1. When x was negative 1, you multiplied that by a half to get negative a half. Square that, you got positive a fourth. You got this. A 0 times a half was 0. Square that, you just got 0. And then when x was 1, multiply 1 by a half, that means you're going to get a half. Square that, you get a fourth. Finally, when x was 2, multiply that by a half, you get 1. Square 1, you get 1. And so this is what's happening. Connect these points here. Oh, 
that is a little higher. What's happening is this. This point gets stretched out to here. This point got stretched out to here. This one stays the same. This one got stretched out to here. This one got stretched out to there. So we took this and we just stretched it out, made it wider. So that's stretching. Let's look at drink. Again, let's go with f of x is x squared. <clears throat> and then let's say we have c be equal to 2. So what happens here? So let's take a look at what happens. Now again, for f of x, we're just squaring these. And then now what we're going to do, we're going to take x, multiply by 2, and square that. So you get f of 2 times negative 2, which is f of negative 4, which is 16. We have f of 2 times negative 1, or f of negative 2, square that, and get 4. f of 2 times 0 is f of 0, square 0 is 0. f of 2 times 1 which is f of 2, square 2, you get 4. And then, oh, it's continuing again. It's going to be 4. Sorry, 2 squared is 4. The math hasn't changed. The universe still works as it normally does. Anyway, f of 2 times 2 equals f of 4, square of 4, you get 16. So again, original ordered pairs. Now we have new ones. Negative 2, 16. Negative 2, 4. Oh, negative 1, 4. 0, 0. 1, 1. 2, 16. So we have the original ordered pairs. And we have, oh, and then check just to make sure we've got the new order pairs. So let's graph these together and see what they look like. So again, the original graph we did 
negative two and four, negative one and one, zero and zero, one and one, two and four. Now for the new one. Negative two times two is negative four. Square that, you got 16. Negative one times two is negative two. Square that, you got four. Zero squared is zero. One or one zero times two is zero. Square zero, you get zero. Now, one times two is two. Square that, you get four. And then two times two is four. Square that, you get 16. So it doesn't quite, it's a little, you can kind of see it. In fact, let me go back out here. Let's pick on a couple extra points. This time for the original function. So let me draw in our transform function. Now, for the original function, f of x equals x squared, let's go for x is negative 4. Square that, you get 16. And for f of 4, square that, you also get 16. So this is what's happening. In this case, we're shrinking horizontally. That point moved in, that point moved in, this one moved in, that one moved in. And if you want, you want to see what's happening with these two, let's take the modified function. f of 2x. And let's take a look at x is 1 half. That becomes f of 2 times a half, which equals, well, it's going to come out to f of 1, square 1, you get 1. So there's a half. And for this new function, modified, that's one. Now let's try negative a half. F of two times the negative a half will be F of negative one square that, you get one. So if we choose x to be negative a half, we get one. So once again, you can see this point's actually moved in here, and that's moved in there. That's what's going on. So this is what we call a horizontal shrink. So that's it. Any questions, let me know.